Hello and welcome back guys. Okay, so the reason we had a problem last time is because it turns out I have a not at the beginning of all these if statements. So it's checking for if not the property exists. So remove those exclamation points. This is in the model.php. Okay, so let's leave those in there and let's give it another shot. So I'm going to try and add the user again, same information. So uh, maybe for now, uh, let me go to the operations and truncate the table again, like so. Alrighty then, so browse back here. Let's try and add. Okay, so here it's telling me call to undefined method hash password. Okay, that's my fault. I think I had mistakenly added a typo here in the user.php model. So let me save that. Let me just repeat this and resend. Okay, so that has happened. Let's check here to see. And you see that um, in here, the password is now hashed. So the problem was in the model, those exclamation points, it was checking for the wrong thing. Okay, that's good. Now, the second thing we must test is to see if I add a um, something that is not allowed here. Let me see if the date was added. So you see the date here was not added at all. Already we can see that it's working because we didn't uh, include the date. Where is this? At the top here, we did not include the date. Okay, so let's add that date to these guys. So I'll say date like so. So now it becomes part of the allowed columns. So let's see how we to handle that this time. So we're going to send the same information again, come back, browse, and you see now we have an actual date. So which means that part is working as well. So the only remaining part is adding a user ID and adding a school ID. Okay, so let's try and do that, shall we? Hopefully uh, you are not getting confused with all this complexity, but this is how uh, frameworks do their thing. So <clears throat> this is practice for when you actually try to use a framework, these things will come naturally because you know exactly how they work. Okay, so what we would do here is I have some code that I already typed here because it's just tedious code to type. So what I did here is this is a function uh, let me just copy all this, then I'll explain what's going on. So we're back to the user model. So down in the user model, where we are making our IDs, I will paste this like so. Now, in the interest of not repeating myself, what I will do is I'll add another function here. Let's just call it a private function here say function, um, we we'll just say random string like this. And then uh, we'll tell it the length of the string. We'll just say length. Wait a minute, what did I put here? That's what I put there. So copy that. I should have just copied the whole thing and paste here. Okay, so let's take a look at this code, shall we? Back here and paste. Okay. So I've used this code in many of my projects. I'm sure you are, if you've checked all those projects, you're familiar with this code by now. So this is an array and I just put numbers here. So that's numbers zero to nine because these are all the numbers that exist. And then I put A, B, C, D up to Z. And then I tried capital A, B, C, D up to Z. Okay. <clears throat> so what it does is it just gets, it loops through and gets a random character here and builds a string step by step to match the length that you have given. Now the length is just a limit. That's the maximum length. So the string can be less than the maximum length or, but it cannot be more. 
so just <clears throat> just copy the code as it is here uh, you can pause the video and copy everything here please do not miss any of these things because i've seen uh, people missing little things like this dot over here it must be dot equals and you must not miss the commas here make sure everything is added properly okay so once you're done here we have this random string copy that so all we need to do here is just add a random string to data so we're going to say data and then we're going to add a user underscore id now keep in mind that this does not exist when data came in this did not exist because only the columns we have are these but i want to add some extras so for me to add the extras i will um wait a minute here yeah so for me to add the extras i will this is the user id let me make sure that uh, this is the correct column value so user id school id okay very good so user id there is going to be equal to random string and then i have to specify that it's a 60 value now the reason i'm adding 60 is because if you go to the structure you see that uh, the ids are 60 characters long so i'm telling it that the maximum should be 60 at least okay now 60 characters is long so there's very rare chance that you have a duplicate and then this is these are not just numbers there's numbers and letters so that increases the chances that uh, you will not get a duplicate but it's possible it's always possible so we'll see how we can add a check to see that it's not duplicated so once we add this that's it we have added a string there and we'll do exactly the same thing for the school ID. Now the school ID is very special here because what will be happening is that we're going to have a value inside the session which contains the school ID. Now if that school ID does not exist this is when we're going to create a random one. Okay so we'll say if not is set. So let's see we say is set like this and then we'll put that in the session so we check in the session in the session we're going to have a variable called user in capital like that now that user is going to have uh, an object like so okay the object is going to be school id that's where we'll be getting our school id from so we haven't created this but that's where it, it's going to be so we'll check if this is set now if that is set then we will add it there like so if it's not set it's better we don't just add it at all so we're going to add this instead of a random string <coughs> like that okay good so session school id and let's change that to school id as well okay so only if it is set now if we want to use the session here we will have to do session start now we only want to do this once so we're going to go to the public folder and inside our index page we have one more thing to add which is session start so down here this way a session is always started regardless what page we are on so let's close that and we are done so here everything is good now keep in mind that since we added this that will eliminate any fold uh, any disallowed uh, columns then in here we don't need to do any of this okay none of this at all all I need to do is add one more item to the post, which is date. So I'm just going to add post date like that. And that's it. Then I will add the post variable right here. Because at this point, I don't really care if there are extra columns like the password too, because they're going to be eliminated since they are not part of this group right here. Okay. So this reduces the code that we have to do. So like that 
only thing we add is the date. If I wanted to, I could add another function to add the date like I did here, but I thought that's too much unnecessary code. We can just add the date right there. Okay, so as you can see, the controller is much lighter now, which is good. So let's give it a test run and see what we get. So I'm going to add one more value here. So undefined function random string. Okay, fair enough. That's because when I was calling it, I didn't use this here. So I have to say this like that because it's a function within this class. So I think that would be the only thing here. Let's get back and try again. Resend, boom. So let's come back and check what we have. So this is the last thing. Now you see we have a user ID right there, which is cool and we don't have a school ID, that's because we are not signed in yet. We haven't created any schools whatsoever. Super admin password is correct, added. Everything seems fine. So at this point, everything is good. We can submit and yeah, everything is working. So let me come back here for a second and let's do a legitimate entry into this database here for the first time. Okay, so back, let's delete everything. Operations, truncate, delete, back here. Let's add, let me go back. So yeah, this is correct information and that's correct information. And then let's click add without errors. Boom, we're in the login page and there we go. We have one good record here. Very nice. Okay, so we've successfully signed up. Now we just need to log in. So I'll see you for the login in the next video.